I have promised I'll do this nice and quick, and uh, if the other guys haven't scared the hell out of you by now, I definitely will. <laughs> All right, just uh, in terms of myself, uh, my name's David Patton, uh, head brewer and director at Riverside. Um, I've been home brewer for, uh, for about five or six years, um, second time around, used to do it when I was a little bit younger than I am now, but I've uh, been, uh, been growing brewing for quite a while. And uh, what we've been doing over the last 12 months is setting up a uh, production brewery, or uh, I've forgotten what you called it, Costa, the microbrewery, um, based down near Parramatta in Western Sydney, if anyone knows where it is, about 20 k's west of Sydney. Um, I'm going to go through why, why we chose that model in a second. Uh, we've gone uh, with a two, uh, 20 heck litre brew length. Um, we did start thinking about it much smaller than that, and for a lot of reasons you've just heard, we've, uh, we've gone with a much bigger brewery. Concentrating on kegs and bottles to start with, 50 litre kegs and uh, 330 mil bottles and 650 mil bottles. And we're almost there, which I've been saying now for about six months, but uh, we, uh, we're looking at getting our final approvals in, uh, in just before Christmas this year. Um, we're, we see ourselves as a, as a regional brewery. Those who don't know, Parramatta is a very, very big city. Uh, it is a, is a CBD in its own right and really doesn't have any uh, microbreweries or any, any uh, craft beer brands that uh, are local to the area there. And that's a really big part of our strategy. Um, I'm not going to go too much in that because I've only got three minutes, uh, but uh, more than welcome to, uh, to come and see me about that in a minute later. Why did we choose the model we did? We looked at, uh, first of all, we looked at the ownership options. Do we want to go and spend a whole lot of money uh, and owning and building uh, our own microbrewery. Um, did we want a contract? Um, particularly, we looked at, do we want to brew under somebody else's license, which would enable us to get out the market a lot quicker, not the 12 months that it's taken so far. Um, the other thing that we looked at, what, what's happening in the, uh, a lot in the States is that a lot of breweries, but even in, uh, in Sydney, Melbourne and, and Queensland are sitting around, uh, well, not so much Queensland, more in Western Australia, they're sitting around with spare capacity and there is the, uh, the option of working with those organisations to, uh, to, to use some of that spare capacity. As I said, big in the States, not so big here yet, I don't think, but I think there's certainly a lot of capacity uh, moving forward for that to happen. But they're, they're, they're the kind of the models that we looked at. Um, we also had a look at the size. What, you know, what do we want to do? I've been a home brewer for a long time. I've got a great little you know, 50 litre brewery. Surely we can make a living out of that. Um, what about a nano? Make it a little bit bigger. Uh, it's a bit cheaper, but, but really, when we looked at, you know, you do the, the business case around a nano or even a mini micro brewery, the numbers just couldn't stack up. Mini micro, as I said, somewhere in between, but the micro brewery, sure, it was larger upfront cost, not linear. Um, it really is small steps up as you go up in size, but really is uh, really the capacity to make money in about uh, 50 years. <laughs> so, so the production micro, we, we have, uh, we've, we've gone with a second-hand brewery, which, uh, which has kept the cost down. Uh, we have a small number of investors and we wanted to keep it that way. Um, to keep costs initially lower, we did decide on the production micro and not an on-site bar or, uh, or on-site consumption or, or, or food. Um, there is a whole other level of council and licensing to go with that. And um, so we thought, you know, let's crawl before we can walk, get that set up. And uh, we have the capacity on-site to do that. Um, but uh, down the track, we'll look at whether we do that on site or uh, or another small bar within the uh, the Parramatta community. There, it really is, as I said, to be a desire to be a part of the local community. Uh, we're getting a lot of uh, a lot of good feedback from not just the restaurants and bars and so forth around the region, but the community itself, um, which is certainly helping us uh, when it comes down to council and things like that. I think um, you know, being you know, adding to the community really makes a big difference, um, rather than just be you know, just trying be a brewer. We, the reason we chose where we are is, uh, is for that particular reason. Purchased second-hand brew house, as I went through before. It's been a 12-month process so far. Hopefully that's it. And uh, as I said, future plans for that off-site bar and licence cafe, and hopefully uh, we'll grow out of that really quickly. Another scary slide. Um, one of the things uh, that David asked me to talk about is, is you know, things to think about when, you, when, you, when you're doing these sorts of things. And I just sort of Straight off the top of my head, some of the things that uh, certainly weren't on the list when we, when we first started looking at, a brewery, at uh, you know, the microbrewery, but certainly uh, things to think about in terms of cost. Brew house is one thing. You've got fermenters, bright beer tanks, bottling lines, keg cleaners and fillers, kegs. Kegs is a massive cost. 50 litre kegs and you need so many of them, it's unbelievable. Rent and bond, mill, pumps and lines, flooring and drainage. Flooring and drainage, you know, that alone is 40, 50 grand in some cases, so it's a... It's a it's a lot of money. Um, calibration of your equipment, something I didn't know about when I first started this, 
And uh, there's certain, you don't have to calibrate your entire brewery. There's, depending on, on uh, what you're doing, it's, uh, there's usually only a couple of vessels, but it's damn expensive. Uh, licensing, uh, insurance, don't forget about that. And uh, I haven't really focused on but the design and marketing, I think uh, Cox has done, done well in sort of explaining that, but um, you know, there's no point in having great beer if you're not getting it out there, designed well and getting the brand out there. What have we learned? Nobody is in as much a hurry as I am. Um, building a viable brewery is expensive. I go three times, not two times. Um, only we, I mean, we're trying to do it properly the first time. We could do it two times, but we're, uh, we're making sure we've got the right infrastructure in place to ensure we've got the, uh, you know, the capacity to growth. Um, I think the, uh, the comments about fermenters is, is spot on. Um, that's really the easy part. We just got to meet it to make sure we had the room to grow those fermenters. We've got uh, two 27 hex fermenters and we know that's not gonna last very long. Uh, what I really learned pretty quickly is it's tough to build a business case around a small brewery. Just the numbers don't stack up. And the best advice that we did listen to, again, buy the biggest brewery you can afford, which, which we did, probably bigger than we originally thought. And a big one for me is don't go pro just to advance the hobby. Do it because you want to do it. You, know, you want this to be a big part of your life because it's, <laughs> trust me, it's a big part of your life. Um, you know, it's not just an, a step up from home brewing. It's a really enjoy, I mean, I've enjoyed every minute of it, but you've got to want to work hard and, uh, and uh, not just part of your life, but your family as well. So uh, ensure that, if, that those sorts of people are all on board and uh, yeah, if, if you want to do it, I uh, certainly recommend it. That's it.